Hello, and thank you for tuning in tonight to How to Win a Court Without a Liar. I'm Dave Horowitz, and I'll be your host. And uh, tonight, let me just make sure I'm, yep, I'm recording. Okay. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be talking about uh, not putting your private out in public. And uh, I see a lot of this going on on the web, I see people, you know, saying they want to be private and live in private, and it's attainable, but, you know, it is up to you, and you have to stop putting, you know, commingling the public and the private, and that's that's what I want to talk to you about tonight. When you, when you Put your, uh, when you set up and establish your trust, uh, you know, if you're going to do that, uh, if you want to live in the private, it is uh, best to do so in private trust. And when you set up your trust declaration and your trust declaration is basically a list of things that uh, kind of like your own bylaws uh, your common law of your private trust. And you set that up, and one of the main things is non-disclosure. Um, what stays in the trust, you know, what, what's in the trust stays in the trust. <laughs> uh, so you don't want to put this out there. It's not something you want to go registering. Um, you don't want to file papers. Um, that is something that you do in defense of your trust, uh, and then you you would just serve notice. You'd serve notice. You're not registering anything. And that would be if and when your trust is um, attacked from, an, from the outside. So, but other than that, you don't want to put your private matters into the public trust. You can or into the public at all. You want to keep your matters private. Your business is your business. And the best way to stay private is keep your business your business. So uh, filing things with the government and, and you know doing all these different things, um, that's the public. Why would you put your private business into the public? Uh, you would, at, at that point, the, the privacy goes out the window. So <laughs> it's not required. So when you're setting up, uh, you know, to live in, in private, your best bet is to keep your business your business. Um, you're not disclosing things to anybody who isn't a party to the trust. Okay. Um, nobody should know what's in the trust other than the parties in the trust. Your grantor will know. Trustee will know, beneficiary will know, but uh, the public does not know. So commingling, you know, it's the same thing. You wouldn't want something from the public coming in and, and, and trying to, you know, make their business uh, your business. So you want to be able to... Um, it's remaining silent, basically. <laughs> it's it's uh, learning, you know, that you don't have to answer questions. You are, you know, your business is private. When there's a uh, trespass, you know, on your privacy, then the the uh, public is trying to get into your trust, get into your assets, get into your business. So you don't want to, uh, you don't want to advertise your business. So best to keep things hush. <laughs> you know, and, and in today's world, it's very hard to do. You know, everywhere you go, they're asking questions. People ask questions, and it's become second nature just to, you know, answer them. You know, you go to the doctor, it's 200 questions. 
you know, everything about your business. You don't have to answer these questions. You can choose not to answer, and you can let them know that. It shouldn't hurt their feelings, and you know, there's no reason to keep a record of everything you know about you when you go into a hospital or a doctor's office. They ask a lot of questions. Um, if you're doing insurance, you know, if you're getting insurance, which is not a horrible thing to do uh, to protect your assets, but as far as the information that's given, okay, it's got to be kept confidential. Then you got to be able to, um, you know, know where to put that you know, on different contracts. This is confidential, uh, only for this purpose, and you spell it out. And it is, you know, after, you know, you don't want it kept on file uh, forever. You know, if it's something specific that somebody needs, then you give very short-term access to it. In this way, you know, and then it has, you know, it, it voids after so many days. So, just little things to keep, you know, keep your information private. And uh, again, the less you have to fill out, I, I don't fill out government forms for anything, nothing, because you never know what you're contracting with with them, and. Uh, the second you do, you're contracting with the public. So, and it, you know whether that's a license, or a registration, or you know birth certificates, W2s, W9s, all 1099s, all of that stuff. Um, if you fill them out, you're going public. You you put yourself right back into the public, and there's no reason. There's no reason if you are living in private and not public, you're foreign to the public. You shouldn't speak their language. You shouldn't use their language. In your documents, you know, there's the you use principles. You do not have to break down their statutes and their codes and their rules. It doesn't hurt to know them. You know, if if you have to defend yourself in court, it does not hurt to know their rules. <clears throat> you want to separate yourself from the public and have them take notice that you are separate from them. So you don't want to use their rules. Use your rules. Um, use your um, the trust that you set up and the trust that you establish whether it's written or in your mind. <laughs> um, you can express it verbally or you can write it down. Sorry, I'm speaking so low. I heard a few people come on. Welcome. Thanks for joining me tonight. Throat's a little sore, but uh, we'll muddle through here. <laughs> So as far as uh, not signing anything that you know anything that uh, the government is putting out there, why apply? You're you're foreign, okay? The, the the Queen of England doesn't have to come over here and apply for a driver's license or uh, get her <laughs> get her uh, vehicles registered, okay? Um, and neither does anybody else from another country that comes here. Um, they don't. They don't do it. You don't have to either. Um, you know, unless you're partaking in commerce, there's no requirement. Uh, you would identify your property, you register it in your trust, and identify it with the trust, private property, and trust. That's it. Instead of putting whatever state you're in and being a part of that, or giving your property to the state in registration or begging or pleading or applying, which is all the same thing, uh, for licenses, for permission. Only the owner can give permission, the owner of a thing. The neighbor, you can't give uh, permission to use the neighbor's car if it's not yours. So you can't do the, you know, the same thing. Uh, 
<laughs> the government, if they're telling you what you can and do with your, your property, okay, which is why you end up in court nine times out of ten, okay, is because they own it. Only the owner can give permission, and what they're doing when they license it back to you is giving you permission. So who's in the owner's seat? Not you. In trust, legal title goes to the trust. Now the trust licenses you as a trustee or a beneficiary to use that property. Trust rules, not your rules, or not public rules, trust rules. Separate country, separate estate. Okay? Just like the rules change when you go over from one state here to another, uh, the laws are all different everywhere you go in this country. <laughs> and uh, so when you go into uh, the estate, okay, it's a, it's a different state. It's a different state. Uh, and it would identify with the estate instead of the public. So when you're, you know, if you're going to go private, these are some things that you, you know, you really want to think of. So, you know, where you're, you know, where these areas of commingling, uh, a lot of people use remedies uh, or try to find remedies, and a lot of them uh, don't work. Not, not even because they're not right there in the law. A lot of them are. Most of them are. A lot of the stuff that you see out there but it's very corrupt. So they don't follow, you know, their own rules. They make them up as they go. And then, you know, so if you're using their rules, know them better than they do. Know them better than they do. If you walk in, you know, if you use your documents, use the principles, not their statutes, use... Um, you know, use your rules. You know, explain. So, unless you're bringing charges in one of their courts against them, you don't want to use their statutes and codes or their constitution. So, which is usually the only way that you can go after the public, uh, which. You really don't want to go that route anyway. Uh, better to have it done through the trust because the trust can defend itself a lot better than uh, the all caps name, you know, somebody toting their, their, their licenses into court and registrations and they build a matrix of relationships with you which shows that you are uh, a party to what they're doing. You've signed some contracts. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. <laughs> good evening. We got some folks on the line. Does anybody have any questions about uh, what I've been talking about? Well, who do we have on the line tonight? Pretty quiet. <laughs> All right. So, you know, um, as far as going, uh, we get back here to. Uh, Commingle with from the private and the public. Um, even in trust, you're not going to commingle. The trustee does not commingle uh, their private, their own stuff with the trust's uh, assets. So you're not going to. The trustee is not allowed to um, benefit from or profit from the trust assets. It's private. It goes, you know, that's there for the beneficiary. They have a beneficial interest. Um, and, and their loyalty, the trustee's loyalty, is to the beneficiary of the trust. And that trust needs to be kept. It can't be um, 
when you, when somebody uh, pulls you over, you get pulled over, and your your property is in trust. Your your the vehicle you're driving is in trust. It's owned by a trust properly. It's properly uh, registered into your trust, and the trust gives license to use it. Okay, it is prop. It is private, not public, and. There is a tort, uh, it's actually common law, but for um, invasion of privacy, okay? And that is, uh, most times, <laughs> it would be, uh, you know, the, the guilty party is government uh, of invading privacy. Individuals can do it, but nine times out of ten, I'd probably say 99.999% of the time, invasions of privacy are based, you know, by government agents. So, which is another way to uh, protect that, that privacy, okay? Uh, there's no good reason for your privacy to be invaded. And that doesn't matter if you're uh, riding your private vehicle down the street, or uh, have you know you're on your private property, or you're just walking along, um, you know your private. Uh, the public ends at your feet if you're living in private. Okay, uh, where, wherever you're standing is private. Okay, you own yourself, which is uh, <laughs> you know it, it, it's something that you can't teach. It is a, you know, it's a, it's a way of, of, of you know, so it's self-image, being able to, you know, know that you own yourself, that you live in your body, you own yourself, nobody has a higher claim to you than you. So a lot of these, uh, <laughs> you know, so like I said, we're, wherever your feet are, that's private, that's yours, Okay. Nobody should be able to invade your space, uh, especially your physical body, which happens all the time in the public. And I've, I've talked to folks that have had, um, you know, uh, brutal encounters with police, okay? Um, you know, not doing anything other than asking questions, you know, so... It's it's pretty common. <laughs> I do post a lot of uh, a lot of stories on on police brutality and things like that, and uh, it's it's ridiculous how much uh, that goes on. You know, you're talking fifty thousand assaults a year by police officer, and fifteen to eighteen hundred, twelve hundred to eighteen hundred people a year killed by. Police is not, uh, you know, that's a lot of cases of, of brutality. And as long as you're peaceful, nobody should be invading your space. Um, again, wherever you go, be private. Somebody asks you your name, sorry, uh, no disrespect, but it's none of your business. And walk away. And walk away. If you're not doing anything, you've got no reason to, you know, answer any questions. Never answer questions. I've said it probably a hundred times on the show already. But, uh, you know, you can ask questions. We've talked about that. You know, if they question you, answer with a question. And then, you know, let them know. I'm private. I don't talk to police. I don't answer questions. Those are statements. You're not answering questions. Okay? So you can make a statement. Don't make a claim. <laughs> okay? Well, you can make the one claim that you are private. That's notice. You can even say that. I'm giving you notice. I'm private. Uh, you know, I have no dealings, no contracts with the public, and, uh, you know, our relationship ends right here. 
unless I've committed a crime. So, and there's a victim. Where's the complainant? So, not commingling, not offering information that is that you want kept private. There is no. As you have to answer questions. Because that is what government has control of. That's what the public is. It's a corporation. So when you're out there in the public, look at what corporations do. Look at all the advertising, all the things that they put out there. Um, so, you know... <laughs> You don't want to advertise your private business. You want to keep it private. Don't offer information. Don't register anything. It's not required. In express trust, it's not required. So, but just some of the benefits of, of, of having a private trust and moving your, you know, your businesses, your, your assets, uh, relationships into private trust. Marriage is not needing permission from the government. That's something that uh, you have a private contract, private trust. How are you guys going to handle things? Right up front. You know? And, and, and you agree. Any kids you have, you don't have to register them. Register them to the trust. Register them to the trust. Keep it private. You got children. Feel <laughs> I know a lot of people have to, you know, are working like two and three jobs. Uh, you know, parent both parents, but uh, homeschooling is, you know, teaching your kids that that's what used to be. Okay. It's a, I mean, most of the folks <laughs> that are tuning in or listen to this, uh, you know, know that, uh, you know. Everything that we were taught in, uh, you know, public indoctrination centers, you know, for the 12 years that we were uh, glued to a chair, told to do this, obey, you know, uh, remember this, remember that, just garbage. Not teaching you how to think, but teaching you what to think. And now, you know, you're thinking on your own. Uh, we have a lot of habits, you know. Answering questions is, a, you know, a horrible habit when it comes to dealing with the public. And like I said, you just got a got a friend who went to uh, whose son is in school, and he's not there. His, he's, you know, with his ex-wife, and um, they said they wanted to have a psychiatrist talk to the kid without the parents there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, they ask questions. And if your kids don't know not to answer questions, uh, he gets you in trouble in any number of ways. They try to make them into informants. You know, it's not, they're not looking out for their safety. They're looking to get a clear picture, a very clear profile of that family's house, what's going on there, their business, everything. And the questions are endless. If any of you have ever, you know, if you go to, if you go to the doctor these days, I just I was in the hospital three times this past summer, and uh, all for the same thing. It was uh, when I went into the doctor. They sat down. It had to be 20 minutes of straight questions. And anything that wasn't about what was going on right there with my with my lungs, I said, I choose not to answer. I choose not to answer. I choose not to answer. And the questions were ridiculous. You know, do you feel depressed? Do you do this? You know, and they, they red flag you. You know, and, and I'll tell you, when you go, if you end up going into a courtroom, they get access to pretty much any record that's out there in the public. 
um, I've been not doing that for about 10 years. And uh, I, had, I had a listener uh, look me up on, or, or try to Google me, and there's not very much there. And there's a couple of Dave Horowitzes that are, you know, way, you know, that are famous. So they do take up a lot. But you really have to look to find out any information on, you know, me. I don't make a whole lot of stuff public. I really don't. So, you know, people Google themselves, and you'll see everywhere you put yourself out there on online. It's another way to, you know. It's good to share on Facebook, you know, but if it's if it's private business, keep it private business, you know, because it's another way. The internet, you're going to get it out there, and you're commingling your private business out in the public. Keep a secret. It's kind of like when you're a kid, you know. Learn to keep a secret. <laughs> Learn to keep a secret. A lot of the times. A fool, uh, the Bible says that a, a fool is wise when he shuts his mouth. So, and what, loose lips sink ships. <laughs> and it does. A lot of people just, uh, you know, ha- have lost uh, their cases in court because they don't know when to be quiet. You know, they ask, you know, they're answer, answering questions instead of asking them. Um, it, it's knowing who you are. It's a lot more to do with it than, than, you know, documents. You can walk in there with absolutely no documents and be able to say, I'm a private individual, you know, I'm private. What is this about? I have nothing to do with the public. Asking questions. What makes you think that, you know, are, are you trying to exercise eminent domain right now? Because that officer took trust property, which is private property, and is now trying to use it for public good uh, or for the public without compensation, without uh you know, without a right to do so because they don't have legal title. They don't have a right to do that if your property is in private. Then you just show it. Show your evidence. Case is over. You've got to walk out. You're done. And you, don't even do it in, you don't even have to do it in the public. You can privately go to the, whoever's bringing the case. Show them the documents. Sorry, this has been indentured to, you know, this property is indentured to private trust. This is not public property. So you give notice, but you don't register anything. Nothing. Okay? I hear people uh, talking about uh, registering the trust, you know, when they, when they, uh, set up their trust about registering it with the IRS, filling out IRS forms. Why would you do that? If it's not a statutory trust, why would you register it with the IRS? Do you plan on, uh, you know, bring, you know, at that point you're commingling. You're commingling your private with the public. That's definitely public. Okay. The last, you know, and again, unless they come after you for some reason, which they should not, uh, then, you know, at that point you give them notice. This is private, not public. It's foreign. Okay? But like your federal corporation is foreign. Okay? So when you go there, you know, you should be able to show, hey, you know, have your have your uh, trust indenture with you. Carry that for ID. Okay? That shows you're private. So, I heard a bunch of people come up. Does anybody have any questions? Don't make it hard on me tonight. <laughs> it's a lot more fun when you guys talk. 
Anybody? No questions at all? Say, David, I have one. All right. <laughs> um, and, and you've maybe discussed this some before, but I'd just like some clarification if possible. Um, say you're doing um, business out of a private trust. Can you still, um, say, sell a product to a corporation, like for resale, or do you, are you commingling then? No, 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 no. That's a, you are you're entering into a contract with another business. You just do it, you know, I mean, you would do it in private. So your contracts are confidential, okay? And they, you know, they usually would have a nondisclosure. It's not, it's not uncommon, okay? Basically, okay. you say, hey, you know, I, there's, there's no tax liability. This is a private trust. Um, you know, it's a it's a unincorporated business trust. You know, so if they're asking for tax information, you don't collect taxes either. So if in your situation, from your question, you're selling it to a company, right? So it benefits yeah. them as well. Okay. Because you're not collecting taxes for the government, because there's no requirement to do that in a, in an un, you know unincorporated business trust. Okay, so basically you you want all that cleared up so at the end of the year you don't get a 1099. Well, you wouldn't get one anyway. Yeah, but I mean the trust. What I'm saying, the trust won't get one anyway. The business trust won't get a 1099. It's not even registered with the stat, you know, the, those statutory uh uh, administrations, the IRS. It's a private. Yeah, but, it, but, it is, what's that? I, I'm 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 saying like uh, the a, a company say you did you know just say ten grand worth of of uh, business with them, and if you didn't have it cleared up, uh, you know a lot of uh, people probably don't understand what a private trust is, and they just. Um, be, well, I suppose if they didn't have your tax information, they couldn't uh, couldn't 1099 you, really. Correct. But you're selling okay. something to them, you said, right? Yeah. Okay. The only thing, you know, they're not paying taxes on it. You're not collecting taxes. You're not collecting sales tax, right, on the products? No. Well... Then, then there's no tax issue there. Okay, I'm thinking you're, more. You're not on, collecting the public taxes. Yeah, I okay, because I was thinking more on the lines of, well, they're set, or spending this much money on you, so they're going to want to be able to write that off as an expense on their taxes, and then they'd probably oh, they can still do that. They can still okay. do that. They could totally still do that. Okay. But they cannot, they, this is where your private contracts, um, you know, it's your contract. It's your sales contract. You know, we'll sell you, you know, this product at, that, at, at this price. And, you know, uh, this contract is private and confidential between the parties and not for public use. Okay? You want disclosures on there. Okay. Not, okay. You know, you okay. want to disclose how you're going to do business with these people, and you're doing it in private between the parties. Not no third party interlopers to the contract, and it has to. You know, you want it spelled out. But okay. The clearer, the, the clearer your contracts are, the, the the better they protect you. Okay, that thank you. That that an, yeah, that answered it for me. Yeah. So you you basically would have a you know your invoice or whatever anything that you you know provide to them. Um, it, it's a good idea anytime you're dealing with somebody outside of the trust to use uh, a trust you know a, a trust contract. Okay, you're, you're basically establishing a trust between your trust, and their business, okay? You're, you're establishing, you're, you're doing, by doing business, you're creating a constructive trust based on the terms of your contract, 
right? So you can do, um, you know, you agree. You say, okay, here, this is, you know, uh, this is how we do business, and, you know, this is the price. There is no sales tax. Um, you know, so they're not paying taxes on it, okay? They're getting a wholesale flat rate, whatever it is, no taxes because you're not doing the work of the government for them. And, uh, again, you want your, your contracts to be um, airtight, basically, bulletproof. No third-party interlopers allowed. This is a, you know, this contract is, is um, you know, is uh, under common law, not statutory, you know. Uh, any issues can be done by mediation between the parties. Okay. You know what I mean? So that you're, you're protecting yourself, and by keeping those contracts confidential between the parties, you know, <laughs> if they try to, you know, write it off on their taxes, you can give them a, a receipt that has, no, you know, no identifying information, you know, just uh, you, you would, you'd sign the receipt and a phone number, and you'd sign it, you know, you, you would autograph it as trustee. And anybody okay. calls, you say, yes, I sold, I sold them. I, I, you know, uh, this was a private business, and it's none of your business. So, you know, because you can defend your contract. Okay, so if the third party comes in, like if they tried to write it off on their taxes and then come toward you, you know, for trying to, you know, for making a profit and trying to tax your profits, that's your contract protects you. Okay. All right, because you're not under those statutes. You weren't created as a charter under the Secretary of State. Okay, like a corporation, LLC, you know, any of those, or a statutory trust, you, you know. You're not setting it up under the, you know, under the state. So it's your contracts that, that need to, you know, to protect you. So the wording in your contracts is very important, um, you know, especially in your business trust, because that's business trusts. Um, people talk about the straw man trust as well, but business trusts are, you know, it's not like your asset trusts where, you know, your car, even your car is probably, uh, you know, susceptible, but properties and, and personal items and things like that, you know, most people aren't going to come in contact with it, you know, but when you're doing business and things, you know, of that nature, you're, you're reaching, you know, you're not commingling, but you are, you know, straddling the fence and, and, and trading with the, uh, a foreign, you know, uh, a foreign state, foreign to your estate. Okay. okay. Uh, you know, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You, you know, as long as everybody's happy, it's a win-win situation, but everybody knows the terms. And the contract, in order for it to be valid, you know, has to have full disclosure. And you got to disclose as a private business owner um, how you choose to do business. Because they don't, I mean, it's no different than walking into the grocery store to buy a six-pack, you know, and, and the 15-year-old the guy behind the counter goes, can I have your ID? turns into an agent. He's asking for government ID, okay? But he's doing it because the company that he works for is a charter of the government. They created it or allowed it to be created. So they have control over it. And they have a ton of statutes to, you know, tell it exactly what it can and can't do. You don't do that in the private. You don't have to do that in the private. The rules of your private business are your own bylaws, just like, you know, uh, McDonald's has its own rules and a corporation has its own rules, right? Their own bylaws and how they do business, how they deal with clients, how they deal with vendors, you know. So it's uh it's it's a little bit of a different animal than than public, but if you, you know, and again, it's just to start to keep you thinking about, you know, how do you protect the privacy of what it is that you're doing? 
you know. So just keeping that in mind when you're doing business will will help you from not having to have those those issues where somebody comes back and says, you know, you owe taxes or, you know, you didn't get a business license or, you know, because it's the same thing. It's just like driving privately, okay? An agent of the state is going to see you and go, hey, you know, um, they're going to, you know, they're going to, they're going to try and say, hey, how come you're different than everybody else? And you got to be able to explain it. The better you explain it, the easier it is, you know, you know, to get along peacefully with everybody else. They can't make claims, is what I'm saying. If you, as long as you keep it private, as long as you don't commingle what's inside the trust, okay, with the public. So the corpus of the trust, the assets in the trust. Um, if the assets of business and there's profits being made, you don't want to uh, co-mingle your whoever the trustee is. You know, again, uh, trustee has to look out for the beneficiary. Uh, the assets of the trust are there for the beneficiary, and the trustee has to, you know, make money, invest, and has all control. Okay, but they're doing it for the benefit of the beneficiary. So commingling that way the trustees' personal funds and the trust is a way that it you know it's a breach of trust. They would consider it a breach of trust, but a breach of trust can come from outside as well. And that's where you know uh, your situation there. If you'd have given them you know contract and you know with with, with good. Um, uh, declarations and, and, and uh, disclosures, then they turn around and they share it with the IRS, you know, they've already, they breached the contract. They breached the contract. And I would have a penalty on it, you know. This is a private, confidential contract between the parties. Um, any breach of trust uh, or disclosure uh, would cause the breaching party to uh, be responsible to pay damages for uh, any damage done to the trust, which would be enough to keep them from disclosing any information that doesn't need to be disclosed. Well, but yes, um, you can Dave, give the, yeah. Um, I, I was going to say, uh, just to step back a little bit when you were talking about the trustee's personal finances. So if I put everything that I own as the grantor into a private trust, say for um, a child, grandchildren, um, then how how do I function privately with my own funds as a trustee of that? Well, this is the way I look at it. Everything that you are, while you are living, okay, you're controlling it all, okay? You control the finances and the funds, and you decide, you know, so the trust buys groceries, and the, and the trust pays the bills, okay? Okay. The expenses aren't falling back to you. You indenture your income, right? You're indentured as a trustee or a, a servant or uh, steward of the estate, right? Well, the estate, yes. uh, the estate supports you. Okay, you still have control over the checkbook. The state supports you. Or the estate supports you, <laughs> not the state supports you. Please don't do that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, the estate supports you, and you are, you know, you're a servant to the estate. It's just as if you were, uh, you know. Um, uh, indentured servant, okay, or a bond servant, okay, uh, slaves, their food was covered, their housing was covered, and everything, right? They weren't making any money, right? It was the master that was making the money. Well, that's how the, 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 the trust is, is, well, look how it is in the public. The trust is the master, right? 
something that was created to serve you and ended up ruling over you. It went corrupt. Right? Well, the same thing. You know, the trust is created to serve you, the grantor, the trustee, and the beneficiary, the parties of the trust. Whoever the parties of the trust are, it's there for their benefit. Okay? But it's not your income. If you're indenturing your income, any income from outside that you use, so if you're using your straw man, you know, your social on a job or whatever, uh, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't, you wouldn't do that either. At that point, what you would do is show your trust indenture, you know, that the, uh, the income is indentured to a private trust. And that goes into the trust. It's the trust's funds. And then as the trustee, you know, you use it to pay your bills and support you. And, you know, if the trust is going to go on vacation, the trust's going on vacation. You know, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, the, you, have, you have full control. If you, you own nothing. The trust owns everything, but you do control everything. Okay. That's the point of the trust, okay? So with ownership comes responsibility, right? This is how yeah. the trust protects you from, you know, limiting your liability in private trust, okay? The only thing that can be attacked is the assets of the trust, okay, which is why you want to have multiple trusts uh, to spread out your assets so that no one, you know, no one thing is, is you know, uh, you don't want all of it in one trust because if something happens, uh, you know, they can go after whatever assets are in the trust. So if, let's say you put a car in the trust, okay, that's the asset in the trust. It's the only asset in the trust. And I would have it leaned by another trust, <laughs> okay, uh, in first place. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, you know. More, way more than, than it's worth, okay? Now you've got a leaned vehicle in the, in the trust, okay? Then, you know, an accident happens. Somebody's looking for damages. They can only go after the trust. Assets, so the actual wrecked car, they could take it. They'd have to pay off the liens first. So you see how that protects the asset? Yeah. Yep. And this is, you know, I mean, this is something that, uh, you know, your, your, your Trumps and, and Fords and Carnegies and, you know, all of them, this is what they've been using. Uh, this is, these are the, the vehicles that they've been using um, to pass on their wealth from generation to generation without uh, any interference from third-party interlopers. You know, people cry about, oh, Trump's not paying taxes. Well, you know, who cares? You know, yeah. it's not he, he's, because everything's in trust. He doesn't own anything, nothing. He bankrupts companies. He didn't own them. They were in trusts, you know. He liquidated them, put all the, the liquid wealth into trust, and, 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 you know, sold off the scraps or went bankrupt. That's what they, you know, that's kind of what they were doing. And it's not just him. Look at the banks, you know. They, they do the same thing. They do the same thing. And they sit back and laugh because people are using pieces of paper that are IOUs from the government and calling it money. Money has value. That's why you put your valuables in trust so that it's not accessible to the public. And you'll preserve it. Generation to generation, you decide how things are dispersed as the grantor, you know. You make up the rules as the grantor, and then as the first trustee, if that's how you're setting it up for your children and grandchildren, okay, um, you're the grantor, so you decide how everything's dispersed and to who who the beneficiaries are, who's getting what, um, you know, is, are the assets going to stay in trust and only profits go to them? You know, you decide everything there. And it's a nice way to, you know, set that up. You're basically setting, you know, 
you're setting up something that can go, you know, generations. And you, you know, you decide, you know, that that's, it, it's a, you know, it's, a, it's an irrevocable contract, right? With an everlasting covenant can go on forever. So long as there's assets in there, you know, distributed and uh, a trustee to distribute them. Well, and even uh, trustee, there's a maxim of law that says that uh, that a, uh, a trust will not fail for a lack of a trustee. Okay, because uh, I mean they can appoint anybody. You know, the, the beneficiaries can appoint a, uh, a trustee. You know, if the trustee dies and there's no co-trustee or uh, you know uh, successor trustee. So yeah, there's still a lot of uh, you know ways to keep that going in perpetuity. So, we have any other questions, trusts, or anything? You got a situation that you're dealing with, or question not even pertaining to what we're talking about? Fine. I know we got a bunch of people on the call. No. All right. Um, I'm going to take a little break, and I will be back in about two minutes. This is How to Win in Court Without a Liar. I'm Dave Horowitz, and I appreciate everybody tuning in tonight and listening. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Dave Horowitz, How to Win in Court Without a Liar. I had to get some coffee for my throat. <laughs> Sorry about that. But, um, yeah, we've got a lot of good things uh, we're working on right now. i um, been extremely busy trying to get that all together. But uh, it's going to be an opportunity for folks to actually live in private trust um, and private property <laughs> and also uh, for training as well. But... Um, Working on more news will come soon, and uh, working on the uh, the trust course as well. We've got a website started, so be able to get a lot more information out to folks, and there'll be a uh, there will be a uh, book depository on the, on the site as well. So we'll, there'll be access to a lot of different information. Uh, legal information and uh, information about trusts and you know finance uh, as far as uh, presentment and, and discharge and acceptance and all the other information on the site once that's up and uh, working on that and actually a uh, Decent sized partnership. <laughs> so, but lots of opportunities will be be coming up pretty soon. Um, especially uh, the class. I'm excited about the class because I, I see a lot of people that are, you know, they're they're um, on Facebook and they're looking for answers and looking for remedies to their issues. And you know, I'll talk to someone and and. and you know, we start talking about going, you know, living in the private and dealing with something, you know, dealing with uh, these legal issues. We, anytime you're talking about legal, you're talking about statutes and rules and acts. And, you know, these are not laws, but they are um, the bylaws of the public. So, um, but when we start talking and, you know, I th thinking that they get it and their understanding of what's going on. And, and um, you know, I talked to a guy oh, about a week ago and hungry, you know, hungry for knowledge, hungry looking, you know, looking for the answers. Um, you know, and I, I made myself accessible. He could call and ask me questions. It's not a problem. That's for anybody. You know, shoot me a, 
a text, an email, a, you know, a message on, on Facebook. Uh, if you've got questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, you know, but I don't like mixing, um, you know, commercial remedies and, and uh, uh, <laughs> constitutional arguments and other things like that, you know. It's, um, you know, those are, to me, um, really not the answer. There is no real remedy in that at all. Um, you know, he produces a burden, has to also pr provide the remedy, and, you know, that's their rule. But it doesn't happen very often. Um, you know, very few people get justice out there in the public. And uh, <laughs> a lot of people get railroaded uh, straight off, especially folks like you guys that are, you know, learning about the law and, and learning how to defend your rights, you know, uh, knowing that your rights were not granted to you by, you know, uh, the Founding Fathers or anybody else, okay? Um, <laughs> so, so looking for remedies in their rules, okay, um, is totally commingling the public and the private, okay? It's, uh, you're not parties <laughs> in the same trust, okay? That's a whole different trust, and they are not privileged. They shouldn't be privileged to your private information and your private trust. When you're, you know, if you do have to defend your private trust and you go into the public court, you know, if you don't know what you're doing and how to defend yourself and the trust, um, you know, and a lot of people, you can go get a trust online and you find templates all over the place. Um, you know, they're out there. Um, I, I've seen a bunch of them. But, again, it's not just a piece of paper. It's the principle of the thing. And you don't need any of that paper if you know the principles of trust. Um, you can explain them. And to know the principles of privacy and can explain them. You know, it's it's very easy at that point to defend your your privacy and your trust. Okay, but it's it's really knowing the principle, the the, the, the foundational principles of trust and privacy, and <laughs> and once you get it, you'll you'll be able to spot a uh, you know an invasion of that privacy, you know or a breach of that trust, um, pretty easy, you know. I, I've, you know I've, I've talked to people that got trusts and, and, and never read the thing. Once they, you know, they had somebody put a trust together for them and never read it. Didn't even know the rules of their own trust or how to act like a trustee, you know. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like uh, getting pulled over and knowing enough to get yourself into trouble. You know, that's not a good place to be in. I mean, it's a, it's a learning experience. You, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll take some lumps and, you know, learn what not to do the next time. You know, you keep up your studies and you keep, you know, um, keep learning and you'll get it. But, you know, somebody who knows just enough to get themselves in trouble, you know, and, uh, you know, when they call them a uh, a sovereign citizen, they you know they they feel proud about that and instead of going, hmm, that just you know, no, I'm not a sovereign citizen, you know, I'm not a terrorist, not a domestic terrorist, uh, not an oxymoron. I'm private and I don't answer your questions. You know. Say, David, I I have another question that every time you talk I think of more questions and I I hope I'm not taking up anybody else's you know time that wants to speak if I am just tell me to shut up and I will <laughs> um, <laughs> but, not a problem you, you know it helps, yeah it helps everybody when you ask them so and anybody can chime in and ask questions I'm absolutely I, yeah, yeah I think it not, uh, not, makes the show better there's more information getting out there, so. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I just yeah. don't want to overpower the call at all. So, um, but now <laughs> I have limited knowledge of of trusts. Um, 
I'm, you know, I, I'm probably much more familiar with a private trust than 90% of the people around me. But it doesn't mean I know how to administer one properly or anything like that. So with that said, now with some vehicles I have paid off, uh, my apartment buildings, um, and I do plan on taking your course, am I better off setting up a, some trusts fairly quickly and getting those apartment buildings into them, the vehicles into them, or should I wait until I understand a lot more uh, because of what you were just saying about knowing just enough to get into trouble? Well, this is the thing. I mean, again, you know, people will pull off a template offline, not even read the whole thing, try to put it together and really not knowing what's going on, why they're doing what they're doing. And, you know, it, it, you can get in trouble. Um, you know, if, if you're, I, I know you're, you're, you're eager to protect your assets. I would be too, you know, and absolutely. Um, if you want to get prepared for, you know, getting into the course, um, you know, the first part of the course, the first two months of the course is going to be establishing your trust or establishing your trust estate, okay, which will be a, a, a web of trusts, okay? okay? And we spoke yeah. about layering, layering your trust so that, you know, um, each one has a specific purpose. Um, and, I mean, you look at the, uh, you know, the Rothschilds, I believe somewhere like 50,000 trusts, something like that, different trusts set up. And a lot of those are trust contracts, you know, with other parties. But that's how, that's how trusts are built. It's relationships. So, if, you know, to, to prep for the course and, and, and to be ready, you know, for, for uh, getting started in that, I would just start, I, I'd, make, I'd take inventory. Okay, because the first part of, of deciding how to how to uh, set up your estate is taking an inventory of what's in the estate, uh, whether those are physical assets, um, real property, it could be um, you know anything of value. Um, you also want to take a, a inventory of your relationships. Which ones do you want to protect in private trust? You know. I say, uh, uh, um, you know, if you have a trust between, you know, husband and wife, you know, it'd be a lot easier and things would be a lot, uh, you know, arguing over things would be a lot less, you know, if there was a trust built and, you know, every got, everybody got to state their terms and, and, you know, what, you know, just helps understanding of the relationship. But uh, it also... You know, if, if the thing came to an end, it's also in there that, you know, it's private arbitration between the parties, you know, or mediation between the parties. So you're mitigating, you know, you're, you're mitigating so, your risk to outside influence. So, you know, so base, basically, basically you're saying I should, I should keep learning <laughs> before I – you know, do more of a fly by night. Well, at least I have the a, a trust set up for my apartment buildings type of thing. Well, I mean, again, a trust is expressed. Do you want your apartment building in trust? Y yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So you just expressed your interest to create a trust, which is all that's required to establish a trust. Okay. You can defend that. Okay. This was set up, you know, my intention is to leave this to my children's children's children. Okay? And you're expressing that. That's expressed trust. It's established. You didn't have to write it down. That's why I say okay. it's very important to understand the principles of it, you know, because the principles are yeah. that easy. You know? Yeah. It really is that easy. The rest it, is just... And I, I get that. What I'm looking at is, well, it's in my name on the county, you know, record registered with the county and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I'm looking at the underlying issues more uh, as compared to actually putting it into a trust. It would be the, the logistics of, okay, removing it from the county registry type of thing. Right. And, 
uh, yep. you know. But, Absolutely, you're going to get 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 legal title transferred over to the trust, and uh, so yeah, that's that's um, something. Well, I I know you want to get these things out of your name and stuff, and I'm I'm, I'm happy to help you do that. You know, if you want to get started before the course, I can definitely start. Uh, you know, so it's not just information and questions that you're getting from here. Um, okay. You have my email address. Um, you know, I I thought I did write it down, but if you'd give it to me again, that'd be great. Sure. Yeah, it's a letter a free man in Babylon at gmail dot com. A free man in Babylon at gmail dot com. Yep. Okay. Great. Send me an email. I'll I'll shoot you my my phone number and and we could talk about your your trust situation and uh but you know in even prep for that like i said start making a uh, an inventory you know the first thing the first thing in in setting up an estate is identifying what is a part of the estate okay so make an inventory of all the assets personal effects uh relationships everything you know, who you want as your beneficiaries, who do you trust, you know, things like that. And this is all, you know, these are the these are the things that you really want to contemplate as you're building your trust, estate, okay. because it's not just a trust, okay? Again, it's not just a trust. It's a bunch of them, okay? You use different contracts. A trust is a contract, okay? It's either an yep. express contract, an implied contract, or, you know, uh, it's either private or it's public, and you know. So that's why uh, you know, as far as even like the business trust that we were talking about earlier, okay, and doing a trust contract with specific terms, you know, to basically lay out the trust relationship between the parties, okay, you and the client, you and the customer, okay, keeping the yep. keeping them in private. So that they that they trust. Okay, your business will create lots of trusts. Okay, and that's just about um, doing your contracts properly. You know, <laughs> I had a company um, for about seven and a half years, eight years. I had a partner. We took, um, and, I, and I ended up doing most of the back end work, um, but it took me three years to perfect our sales contract, which ended up being 14 wow. pages long. Okay. But whenever we ran into a problem, you know, um, I ended up, you know, making changes to the point where, you know, I, I would get somebody, uh, you know, I'd help somebody get a hundred thousand dollars and they pay me my fee then they piss through their money and 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 you know uh, turn around and charge back because <laughs> they can't afford the payments and they didn't listen to a thing that I told them. But you know um, you know and they charge back their you know the fees and cause problems. My contract you have to have it notarized. It was 14 pages long. Um, you know there were. Uh, there were uh, disclosures in there that I don't even have to take you to court to get a judgment. You know, if you, if, you know, if there's a breach of contract, that's the end. You know, the, the, it's automatic judgment. Okay, you can go file a lien or um, <coughs> shut down their credit lines and have their loans called. You know, there's a lot of things that I put in there over the years because I kept seeing where, you know, uh, there was a breach of trust, okay, and the, uh, you know, it wasn't specifically stated out in the contract. So I wasn't able to get recourse, right? So it took a while to get everything, you know, work out all the bugs. When it was done, it was great, you know. Didn't have a single problem after that. You know, because it, it basically knew that, uh, you know, hey, I didn't charge you anything up front. I did what I said I was going to do. I fulfilled the contract, 
and now you have to pay me, you know. So, but again, it, it took me a good part of three years and 14 pages is that contract. And, um, you know, so setting up your trust contracts and things like that takes some time. You know, and it's going to be dependent on each individual situation, you know, if it's your business trust or family banking trust or, um, you know, an asset trust, management trust, business trust, all of those things. Business trust, you're going to have the most contracts just because you're getting clients. Obviously, the whole purpose is to get customers, you know, and those customers are little trust contracts. <laughs> they're, they're uh, you know, they're little trusts. Every the, the relationship that you go into is a trust. Um, tech, my my uh, notice when I, when I get pulled over is a trust. It's a constructive trust. <laughs> says so. It's a notice that will be a trust if this, 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 or this happens. Okay, so they know ahead of time if they're going to start an action against me, then, you know, they're entering, they're agreeing to my terms. So that's the, that's the way you would, you know, you'd be able to present a document, a notice to the public when it tries to invade your privacy or breach your trust from the outside. So, good question, though. So, yeah, as far as uh, getting prepped for that, Chad, I would, uh, you know, just start making an inventory. And um, once you have that together, you'll start to see, you know, how your trust estate lays out and roughly how many trusts you're going to have to establish to protect your, you know, protect your property. But it becomes, uh, you know, it becomes, I mean, you're a lot more aware of the things that you have, you know, when you're, when you're understanding in, uh, of what being a trustee is. Because basically, you're trying to be a good steward of the things that you have in your possession, you know, and take care of them for your beneficiaries, you know. So you start to appreciate uh, the stuff that you put in there. To protect, um, realizing that there is, you know, a, a higher purpose. But good questions. Anybody else have any questions? I know there's some other folks on the line. Stop hiding. I can't ask all the questions. Anybody have a, a court issue or? Legal questions that they have um, doesn't that have to be about trusts. It could be about anything. We've got a uh, you know uh, medical case or you know workers' comp or anything like that. I uh, can pretty much pretty much answer any of those questions as well. I'm happy to help. That's why I'm doing this. So it has been an absolutely long week. If nobody has any questions, I'm probably going to wrap up early. Um, however, and again, if I if I do end up wrapping up early, uh, please feel free to give me a call, shoot me a text, email, uh, private message from Facebook if you have any questions or um, you have an issue that you need help with. I would be happy to help you with that. So again, we're. Uh, working on, on putting together um, some different services, uh, private trust management and things like that as well um, as, part of, as part of that. So, yes, uh, it's not just this podcast. Um, you know, we do have an unincorporated business going and, and uh, you know, we'll be able to provide a lot of help to a lot of folks that are, you know, having issues with, you know, co-mingling uh, remedies and and uh, having a hard time uh, dealing with the courts. Um, people that want to 
exodus out of the public and start living privately. Uh, a lot of it's geared toward that. So it's, uh, you know, you don't want to straddle the fence. You want to be on your side of the fence. You can still do business with the other side. It's just, you know, there's a very clear uh, delineation between where you are and where they are. And it's important to uh, to keep that, you know. That's, uh, it's very important to keep that because handling your business in the private is running over your neighbor's mailbox, going over there and saying, hey, I broke your mailbox. Uh, you're going to deal with them privately. Let's go get you a new one. I'll put it in. And now I've dealt with it in private, okay? Nobody invited the public in. Uh, but if I hit the mailbox and he got all mad and wouldn't accept my, you know, me going and getting him a new one, he calls in the public, okay? Now, I can still have the option to deal with my case, you know, with that instance privately, okay? I don't have to go into the public. Even if he calls them, I do not have to go into the public because I will refuse to contract with that agent. Sorry, uh, offering a remedy to make this person whole again right here, right now, and as if it never happened. And that's settling it privately. And there's nothing that they can do uh, to hinder you from settling a matter privately with the individual that you've armed. Okay? Um, although they would love to, you know, kick their foot in the door and charge you with something, maybe both, you know, charge, charge the person that called, you know, shoot the dog, who knows? I mean, it's crazy when they show up these days. But, um, yeah, handling your, handling your stuff privately. Um, you always have a right, uh, you know, to, to be responsible. That's really what it is. You know, you're responsible for your actions. Handle it in private. Never should have to go to the public. Never should have to go to the public because you're paying a major premium to go there. Heck, go try and file a federal lawsuit. It's over four hundred dollars, okay, to, to 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 be able to try and get justice if you can, okay, and that's just a file, and you've got to do the case just uh it's a mess it's so much better to deal with things in private um, there are ways to privately adjudicate uh, a case even if it is with the government the state charging you there is ways to do that there's a uh, saw something about this treaty of peace I don't know if anybody's heard of it but uh, this week uh, well, a couple weeks ago I heard about it um, this uh, can't remember. I think it's James Hudock, but um, you know these guys have been getting together for a bunch of years, and you know they're a, a church group, and they've been studying uh, law and these things for uh, quite a number of years, and they did a binding arbitration with the government and won, and it's uh, looks like it'll help a lot of people out didn't look into it 100%, but uh, it, it was interesting the approach that they took with the public, you know, uh, being an interloper, trying to uh, invade private people, and uh, they took it to arbitration. Arbitrator decided there was a contract and that there was a breach of the contract and a breach of a trust, and uh, got awarded. That private arbitration is a far... What's that? What was that? Oh, well, somebody had a question. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they awarded it, and then what they'll, what they'll do, um, probably, most likely, will be uh, fired on, uh, file it uh, notice under the 
private adjudication or foreign adjudication act. And that's pretty similar to how you would do that from a trust. Okay? Because when you're in private trust, you have, you're in a private state. Okay? And you deal with things as if it was your country, your state, because it is, and you make the rules. You adjudicate it privately. You, you decide the matter, and then you send them notice of how it was adjudicated and why. You adjudicate based on the facts in the private side, unlike the public side where they're adjudicating fictions, unfounded accusations, victimless, you know, imaginary injured parties, you know, and, yeah, it's hard to defend, uh, you know, when, when, you're, when you're going after Mickey Mouse. And that's what you're dealing with. But on the private side, you're dealing with just the facts. Don't want to hear the accusations. Just want to see the facts. Show me the evidence. You're dealing with things that you can, you know, see, hear, smell, touch, you know, and, you know, it's tangible facts. You're not dealing with legal fictions. You're not dealing with presumptions. You're not dealing with assumptions. Just the facts. And that is what a jury is supposed to do, adjudicate on the facts, okay? Not what they're doing in the public. It's what they're supposed to be doing in the public, but that's not exactly what they're doing in the public. <laughs> Anybody that's tried to enter facts into a case in the public knows that's not what they're doing in the public. <laughs> so anybody that's ever been railroaded in one of these fictional courts uh, knows that they are not accepting facts as evidence. They prefer false accusations because it goes along with the fiction that they are. You know, it goes along with the presumptions that they are assuming or presuming. All right, so uh, I don't know if I'm going to keep talking. My throat is starting to hurt, but uh, I will answer any more questions. Um, if anybody has any questions, I do appreciate you guys coming on tonight and tuning in, and those of you that uh, follow the recordings on anchor.fm um, or iTunes or uh, Spotify. There's, there's a bunch of them, but I do upload the, uh, the recordings. And, uh, yeah, if anybody has any questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer them before I get off here. But I'm going to start to, to, to wrap it up here shortly. I, uh, I still have to talk tomorrow. I've been on the phone literally nonstop today at a little break, but uh, I usually don't take too many calls on Sunday. But, um, yeah, it's been a, just a long, long week of, uh, you know, 12, 13-hour days on the phone. So... Anybody, please ask your questions if you have them. Otherwise, I am going to wrap it up and say thank you for spending some time with me this Sunday evening. And uh, you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Uh, if anybody, um, you know, uh, is able or would like to, please uh, feel free to support the show. And... Um, there's a uh, donation button on the link that uh, you found the show on. But I do appreciate that. I do appreciate all the support. There was some good news. Uh, I want to thank a listener, Peter, for um, for helping me with the, uh, the hosting for the new website, as well as uh, uh, donating to get some new equipment, which should be here shortly. So the uh, sound on these recordings will become a lot better once that happens. <laughs> and uh, I appreciate that. Thank you, Peter. And um, so uh, one, more, one more try. Anybody have a question? No? Well, thanks again for joining me. And everybody have a great rest of the night. Take care. <laughs>